Hello everyone, this is Nitin here. How you guys are doing? I hope your watercolor is uh, going great. You are learning from my videos. So if you have not subscribed my channel, then I would request, request you to please go and subscribe my channel. And do not forget to click on the bell icon. So that gives you a notification whenever I update any new video. So well, so in this video, I'm going to make uh, a very interesting uh, the fact about uh, learning a watercolor. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to leverage our drawing skill uh, with a pen. So this is the pen, uh, this is the, the ink pen, uh, which has uh, a 0 0.4 uh, the point. So I've given the, uh, the link of uh, this pen. So, so what we are going to do is we are also going to take an inspiration from still life. So still life is something uh, uh, which actually we arrange the object in a such a way that uh, it forms a, a composition and uh, it also contains the light and the depth and the entire the velocity of uh, uh, you know the the composition of your artwork. So we are going to take that. Uh, why this is important? Because uh, if you want to learn and improve your watercolor, then you have to do a lot of sketch. So this is the reference uh, of this uh, still life, uh, which I'm going to make a, a demo of it. So we are going to make a very quick sketch. And this is how you should also approach. Right. So here we have uh, the the avocado and uh, there is the one orange and uh, one couple of apple here just below this there is another one Okay, and just below this, I mean, uh, the behind this, there is a, a one small bonsai, and uh, maybe here's one frame. of your beloved one all right so now we have our outer drawing ready so now what we need to do is uh, we need to define it uh, with a tonal value uh, like uh, the strokes from uh, from this pen uh, this is important because uh, that gives you a complete visibility uh, from where the light source is coming in where should be your shadows where should be your light upper and every aspect of uh, you know uh, the depth and light and the shadow of for this uh, this is so important when you are preparing to you know make a wonderful watercolor art so let's go ahead uh, and uh, let's do uh, how things are coming up so be very free do not just uh, you know uh, stick yourself saying that i want to make an, a, a great art from this just be very uh, you know uh, very agile just make whatever you feel is more appropriate so in this case i'm going to make uh, a sketch so i'm making this uh, uh, entire thing as a first stroke and then my i just want to leave this from this side i wanted to have the light source uh, or maybe probably from this side okay so this way uh, I have if you can see in my previous video also I have uh, very clearly point out such rule and the reason I'm just pointing out all of this is because of this is so important this is this gives you a lot of idea about the light and the depth okay so be very free now I just wanted to have this orange uh, this part should be lighter because the source is coming from this side so this way 
this part will you know, for the orange will be darker the bottom part of this all right and uh, the similar concept uh, the principle applies here also for this apple here you give this the dust here but when you make this uh, uh, you know uh, the stove uh, so probably you wanted to do uh, probably I'll just take uh, uh, I'll take it here so when you're making this uh, stoke you make it this way this way okay suddenly don't start making uh, you know something like this something like this don't do so what you do is when you're making the stoke this way then the second stoke has to be in the same fashion exactly like this and the th third tonal will be like this right so now you can see the gradients it coming up like this so have this concept the similar concept here the same thing applies here the behind apple there is another apple there right and uh, now this tree this beautiful green bonsai is having a lot of depth here here and there so make that uh, work for you and now the light since the source of the slide from this side so your shadow has to be this way am I right So the reason I'm making this quick sketch because I also want you to do this because uh, you really don't spend so much of time. So wherever you find time when you're traveling, when you are, uh, you know, on your bed, uh, just uh, wanted to do some sketch, you can just made it immediately start. Have a, uh, you know, sketch sketch pad like this, and uh, that that will give you a lot of flexibility to start your work immediately anywhere so that is the another one so in this case I'm just keeping uh, our portrait here not necessarily to give a lot of detail and uh, it's the holder here the thickness of, thickness of this so we can define it later and uh, so you can make it a lot more depth here right so now you can see that we have given already the most of the important uh, uh, depth we have already given so our objects has come out very nicely this orange, uh, we know now we are very much clear that uh, from where the source are, the light source, from where it is coming, right? See the light here, see the light here, light here and depth here. More depth, right? More depth. okay so this is what uh, we have we can make it even more uh, you know uh, interesting if you want to make it uh, very uh, detailed kind of work that also you can do it but I would suggest you don't spend much time on it because we just wanted to you know every day we wanted to make something like this and then go uh, start uh, you know uh, start putting color into it so this is the first thing so which will have to do it and then uh, uh, we will move uh, in a coloring of it. I'm sure you're not able to see this color, but this is uh, ultramarine blue, and I'm mixing this with a sepia a little bit, and I'm making the the background of this colors. 
so this is the background now this is the interesting here when you are going down here so that has to be dark because this is the frame and uh, the most of the light is coming from this side so this way it has to be a little more dark here right so put the color without any hesitation okay now uh, we have to paint this tree so i'm just taking this uh, sapia sorry uh, this uh, sap green mixing with a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and uh, okay now i'm just taking this uh, Ultramarine blue mixing with uh, sapia. And I've given this depth there again. Now, in this case, uh, we are absolutely having a hold of uh, applying the color because of most of the things has already been defined by the color. So, for this. Uh, one we really don't need to think much about it okay so now I, we have given the entire color so we need to uh, give a little bit of depth here right so i'm just mixing this green mixing with uh, ultramarine blue and giving a little depth here and here also by the by the way the paper i am using is a, is a normal paper it's not even watercolor paper because i don't want to spend your money buying a watercolor expensive watercolor paper and doing that these are a very experimental kind of work you have to do right so don't buy all of this just go with a normal paper which should hold some bit of uh, color and now we have to go for orange so i've just taken this uh, orange directly and uh, i'm just pulling that thing now this one we had to be a little darker here so i'm mixing this with the sepia or probably you can take a bunciana also mix that and here we go Very good. Try to leave some white space that gives a, a nice uh, feel into your art. Now we are coming with a beautiful red color apple. So the same concept here. Just leave that and just try to leave the white uh, because this, the signing of this apple has to reflect. Leaving the white space is so important. So remember that. So I'm not painted here, I've just left it as it is. Now here another apple, which is just a little behind that. Now we need to emerge from this one. It has to be merged. So we need to make that apple a little darker. So I'm just taking this uh, ultramarine blue and Mixing with her uh, right color, probably a little bunciana, and here a little bit of a uh... okay. 
Now I come to this uh, frame. So I've just taken this ultra matte and blue again, but I don't want to take too much of it because if if you apply the same ultra matte and blue, then it will merge. So you you really don't want to do that, right? So I've just changed my mind. I've just taken this sepia color and a lot of water, so it reduces it reduces the the tonal value of a frame and uh, it's just simple yeah that's fairly good and now the background of the portrait as I said we don't need to make it uh, very obvious just impression of it uh, remember that these exercises actually enables you to paint watercolor okay um, this teaches you how to move ahead how to move further what was the the technique these are the techniques are so highly important okay and we are pretty good here yeah. now we have, most of the things are we have already done so now we have to make this surface right the shadow so i've taken this ultramarine blue mix with sepia with ultramarine blue again and this all the shadows All right, so thank you so much everyone. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, you have learned something. Uh, meanwhile, I would uh, request you to go and follow me in, uh, uh, in Instagram. Uh, you will be getting a lot of updates every day, what I am creating and uh, a lot many uh, watercolor, uh, you know, uh, the updates uh, from my end. So please uh, follow me uh, on Instagram and uh, thank you so much uh, happy watercoloring i'll be coming with a new video very soon thank you